So a few days back, this comment appeared on one of my recent videos. And of course, that could only mean one thing. Today, we're gonna rebuild something that Apple made. So Steve Jobs building Apple's website. How cool is that? What we're gonna do today is rebuilding this carousel, but only using CSS. And perhaps in the end, enhanced a little bit with JavaScript, but we're mainly gonna build a carousel that works fully without JavaScript using CSS scroll snapping. The specific carousel we are actually looking at is using JavaScript, but there's also carousels on Apple's website that also are using CSS scroll snapping. If we, for example, look at this carousel, then these are fully built with scroll snapping, which also means that you can scroll through the carousel to switch slides. There's also these arrows you can still use to also switch, but the biggest benefit with using CSS for these carousels is that you don't need any JavaScript. So even if the JavaScript is disabled, those carousels will still work. And don't get me wrong, I'm not gonna say that we're gonna build a fully perfect carousel with only CSS because that's just not possible. But since carousels are also always up for debate whether they are good elements to use because they hide certain stuff off the page, they have some accessibility pitfalls and things like that, I think choosing CSS for your carousel is actually the right way to go if you still want to use a carousel. Because this way, there is very little JavaScript that you need or nothing at all if you don't want these arrows. But with pretty low effort, you can already create a carousel, especially on mobile, that's just really easy and quick to swipe through if you want to have some more content on the page. For example, for article cards or perhaps products like Apple is doing here. So let's jump right in and make this together. So unlike other videos where I already prepared a little bit of the CSS, this time we're gonna start from scratch. So that means that we're also gonna style the full carousel ourselves. Because it seems like you people also liked me seeing building all these things. So we're gonna do that together as well. The only thing that's set up right now is a empty Vt project where I already set up Tailwind and I added in an app component with already all of the slides that we're needing. Also, all these images I've already downloaded and put in the public directory so we can use them right away. And as far as the app goes, that's actually it. It's only an empty div. Right now I'm using client-side React for this because it's a Vt client-side project. But of course, you could also decide to do this in Next.js or you could even build this without a JavaScript framework because we'll be mainly using CSS. But in this case, we're sticking with React. Oh, and one other thing I already set up is also making sure that we use the correct font that's used by Apple as well. You can see that I've added that in as a sans serif font in the Tailwind config over here. So looking at Apple's website, what I wanna make today is we're gonna add a great background to the page then add this title as well as the carousel and the previous and next buttons. Everything else that's on the page, it's not something we're gonna build today. So first things first, let's add the background to the page. We're gonna do that by adding a class name to this div with a background of gray 200 and make sure that it has a min height of the full screen, as well as we're gonna set the font that we're using, which is the sans serif font as well as uh, padding on the y-axis of 16. So at least we have some vertical space from the top and the bottom in a second. Next is adding in the page title, for which I will choose to use an H2 for now, because it's not the main page title. And I'm also not gonna be too specific with things like the exact colors, exact font sizes and things like that, because otherwise we would be investing way too much time in setting up these styles. And I actually wanna show you how to build a carousel, right? So let's make sure that the font looks decent by making it semi-bold and give it a size of six extra large, for example, and also center the text. And then looking at Apple's website, you see that it's split over multiple lines. So for now, we're gonna stick with adding a max width of 800 pixels, for example, and then making sure that we center this heading. That already brings us to the carousel. We're gonna start with adding an, an order list for this carousel, and then render out all of the different slides that I've already set up in a variable. So let's do that by writing slides.map 
where we get every slide. And for every slide, we return a list item with a key, which is, of course, necessary for React. And in there, we start with rendering the slide title for now. That already gives us the titles, of course. Next is making sure that they're centered horizontally. And we're also going to give the heading a margin bottom of 20, for example. So we have some more spacing again. And then we're going to style the slides themselves. They have a background of white. And looking at the design, they also all have a fixed width. For now, we're going to assume that this width is 400 pixels. And they have a border radius. So we're going to give it a rounded extra large, which will already give them a border radius. I'm also going to give this carousel a fixed height of 500 pixels. And then because it's flexbox automatically, all the children will also stretch to the full height. However, what you also see that happens is that they're also not 400 pixels wide anymore. They're skewed to fit inside its parent container, which is the default behavior of flexbox. And we can prevent that from happening by using flex shrink. And in Tailwind, we can do that by adding shrink zero, which sets flex shrink to zero. And what you immediately see is that they now have the right size, but that also a scroll bar appeared at the bottom of the page because it's overflowing the container, of course. So instead of overflowing the full container, we're actually going to overflow the list. So the scroll bar is right underneath the list. And we do that by adding overflow x auto on the list. And then immediately you see that the scroll bar now is on the unordered list instead of on the full page. We're also going to add some margin to the right side of all of the slides. So there's also some spacing in between them. But I don't want to have this margin at the last slide. Uh, so we can prevent that by adding a last colon margin zero. So that way the last slide does not have a margin on the right side. So before we continue on the carousel logic, let's first make sure that we also style the carousel items themselves. By looking at Apple's design, you see that they have images of all different sizes because this image is rather small and this one is pretty large. So what I did is I downloaded all the images in their original size, but in the slides array, I also added a property called centered because mainly these small images, they are centered vertically, whereas all the large images, they're aligned on the top. So based on this Boolean, in a second, we're either going to align the image or not. So let's first add that image in. And don't forget to add an alt tag. We're actually using the title for an alt tag is never a good solution because that's useless to a visually impaired user. So if you do have the option, always add a different field in the CMS where a CMS editor can describe the image so that can be used as an alt tag. And since all of the images also have different dimensions, I also added these dimensions in the object as well. So we can give the image the proper size. So that means that we can still add in the width as well as the height. And actually width and height isn't a good name. That should be image width and image height because that way these properties will be a lot clearer. And after doing that, we see that the images have the right proportion. And now let's center this image as well. The easiest way to do that is by making this list item flex box. And then it also needs to be a flex column because by default it's row, so everything is next to each other. And then we're gonna add a div around this image and turn this title into an H3. And by now giving that H3 a margin top of auto, it will push itself down because of flex box. And if we then make this div h full, it will never be completely h full because both the div as well as the heading don't have a flex shrink. So they will always make sure to fit both in the parent. So if we inspect this h full, you see that it's not 100% height, but it's taking into account the height of the heading. However, we can leverage the height of this element now to center the image when needed. We can do that by turning this div into a flexbox div as well, and then add in a conditional class to either center the image or align it to the top. For that, I usually use a package called class names. With this package, I can use a Boolean 
uh, in this case, the slide dot centered to either say items center or add the class item star. And with that, you already see that the images that don't have the center boolean, they're aligned to the top, whereas the images that do have the center boolean are aligned in the center. And if we now also add justify center, then also the image will be aligned horizontally in the middle. And with that, it seems like it's time to also give the heading its proper sizes. So let's give that a text size of two extra large, as well as a font weight of semi bold, and give it a padding on all sides of six, for example. And if we compare that to Apple's website, we already see that we're pretty close. I see that our border radius is actually a bit too little, so I want to change that, but that's the only thing for the design I'm going to change. So let's change this to around it to extra large, which makes it just a little bit better. And now the thing you have been waiting for, we're going to turn this into a real carousel because this is just a scrollable div, right? And that scroll bar, that looks ugly as well. We don't want that, of course. So the way we're going to turn this into a carousel is by using CSS scroll snap. Since we're going to use Tailwind, we're not really looking at the exact CSS properties we're adding. I will make sure to keep an eye on the DevTools as well to show you what properties are being added. But I will also link this article in the description where you can find all of the different CSS properties that you are actually able to use. Because if we go back to our own website, we can make this function like a carousel with only a few classes. The first one is snap X on the unordered list which tells the unordered list that when it scrolls on the x-axis, it should snap to something, although it doesn't know what yet. And that's where we're going to add the second class for, which is the class snap start that we add on the list items. And these two class names, they kind of communicate with each other because this tells the unordered list that every list item that has a snap start or actually every child that has a snap start class that that's what it should snap to when it scrolls. Next to snap start, you also have snap center and snap end, which decide where it should align itself on, either on the beginning of the element, the center or the right side. So now we added this, and if we then scroll our element and stop halfway, you see that it keeps on moving. As soon as I stop scrolling, it moves the element until the first item that has a snap start is at the beginning of the visible portion of the unordered list. And if we don't scroll far enough, it will go back to the previous one because it will always look for the closest element to snap to. But I am still able to scroll wildly through this div. And depending on what you're building, that could be what you want. It could also be that you want to have more of a carousel feel where if you even if you swipe really fast, it would still snap to the next element. And that we can achieve by adding both snap always to the list item, as well as a snap mandatory to the unordered list. And that way, no matter how fast I scroll, I will always stop at the next item in the carousel. And depending on what you're building, that can be either what you like or what you don't like. But I'm going to stick with this because it gives me more a feeling of real carousel. Before we continue, let's quickly look at the element inspector to see which properties have actually been applied. If we look at the unordered list and go to the computed properties, we see that it added a scroll snap type of X and mandatory. So those are the real CSS properties you should actually use if you're not using Tailwind. And if we look at the unordered list, you see that it actually adds two properties, both scroll snap align as well as scroll snap stop. And those are the two properties that actually are added by these Tailwind class names. So again, if you're not using Tailwind, that's what you should resort for. And if you want to learn more about all of these exact properties, definitely check out that link I've added in the description as well. So the next thing that definitely still bothers me is this scroll bar. And by adding overflow, you will always get that scroll bar. So there is not really a great way to solve this. Unless you're Steve Jobs, of course. Let me show you a tip how you can fix that, actually. What I'm going to do for that is I'm going to wrap my unordered list inside another div. Then I'm going to add a padding bottom of 10 on the list 
as well as extend the height of this another list with the height of this padding. So 10 maps to 40 pixels. So I'm gonna make this 540 pixels. So now everything became just a bit higher. And now comes the magic. We're gonna add a class name on this div and give it a height of 500 pixels and add overflow hidden. And with that, the scroll bar is gone. And this works. You can still scroll this thing and it snaps to wherever you want. But there is no ugly scroll bar anymore. The next thing you still might want to do is also center this carousel on the page. So if we zoom out a little bit, you see that everything goes fully to the left because we didn't add a wrapper around this at all. However, if we would add a wrapper on here that, for example, has a width of 1200 pixels and is centered in the middle, then we see that it is centered, but our carousel is cut off. So what's the best way to do this? I mean, let's remove that diff for a second. We could, of course, give a margin left to our unordered list, but we don't know how far. Usually you have a container that's like 1200 pixels and you want to align it in the middle. But let me tell you again, I have another trick, which involves a little bit of mathematics, but let me show you. Hopefully, once you see it, it's not that complicated anymore. Let's remove that margin first. And then I'm going to go to my index.css file. And in there, I can define global styles in Tailwind by extending the layer base. And in there, I'm going to add a CSS variable for now. That CSS variable is called container size, which is, for example, 1200 pixels. So this variable, you can imagine, would be used throughout your whole CSS to align everything in the center with a max width of 1200 pixels. And now I'm going to add another utility to Tailwind, which is it's just a class you can use on any element. So for that, you're also going to extend the utilities layer. And in there, we're going to add a class name called slide center, for example. And what we're going to do here is a really neat little trick that transforms this slide and does a translate on the X axis. And what we want to move it is half the width of the current page. Or if the page is larger than 1200 pixels, we want to take these 1200 pixels. So for that, we can use a CSS max, or we can add in our variable container size or 100 viewport width. And that we want to divide by two. And we're not done yet, but I still quickly want to show you what this will already do. Because what I want to do with this is actually wrap the full contents of our slide in this div and add in the slide center class name as well as relative. Oh, and of course, we're doing a calculation here divided by two, which means that we still need to wrap this in calc as well. Then you see that the contents of the slides already gets moved over, but the background of the slides isn't yet because that's still applied on the list item. So let's also move those over to the new wrapper div as well. And also make this of full height. So it extends the full height still. And what you see now is that everything is moved over halfway. So that brings us closer to where we want, but not fully yet. So what we still need to do is offset this by the half of the container width. So by 600 pixels. So we can do that by subtracting another calc of var container size divided by two. And that now puts our slider exactly on the 1200 pixel spot. So this way it is centered now. And if we scroll, we see that it nicely flows over all the way to the other side until we've reached the end. And if I zoom back in, and then go all the way to the left, we also see that it still nicely stays on the left side of the page. And even on mobile, it still fits. Of course, we could debate that we want to add some padding on the left side and things like that. But for now, it's not that it extends to the full 1200 pixels. The scrolling, however, does stop when you reach the end of the scrollable div. It will not move this accessibility slide all the way to the left, simply because there's no space left to scroll. If you really wanted that, you could, for example, add in a padding right of 100 viewport width, because that gives it more room on the right side to scroll, but you can never over scroll this. 
because it will always snap back to the last slide. So if this is again the behavior you want, that's a small thing you could still add in. So looking at Apple's example, there's still one thing I still want to add in because you cannot drag these carousels. You can of course build that if you add in JavaScript again, but if you need that behavior, then why go with CSS in the first place? Perhaps sticking with a real carousel makes sense then. But the other way users can navigate this is with the arrows. And that's still a really little bit of JavaScript I want to add in to also make this carousel accessible on desktop as well. Of course, if you have a trackpad, uh, you can scroll these, or not this example that Apple made, but our version you can scroll. But having these arrow keys as well definitely helps a lot of users. So let's first add in two buttons. One for previous and one for next. I've also already downloaded a Chevron icon, so let's also add that in. And then looking at Apple's website, there is no text in here, but for accessibility, it's super important to do have this text in here. So for that, I'm going to add a span with a class name of SR only which means that this text will not be visible for our eyes, but will be visible for screen readers. So if you look, the text is gone, but it's still accessible for the screen readers. Okay, let's add a class name on this front as well to rotate it 180 degrees, as well as let's give them a proper size, width 3 and height 3, for example, and then also wrap these in a div so we can center them. And also a little bit of a margin. Okay, let's make these buttons a bit more nice by making them a width eight and a height of eight, as well as a border of two pixels, a border of black, and rounded cool. And then we also make them flex so we can item center and justify center. And also give this one a margin right of two. And with that, we have two buttons that don't do anything yet. So let's fix that. First thing I want to do is keep track of which slide is actually visible right now. And with using the little JavaScript, I think the best way to do that is by keeping track of the scroll position of this unordered list. So for that, we can use the unscroll property which will give us an event. And inside that event, like Copilot already knows, we have a property current target, which is the unordered list. And that has a property scroll left. And that property tells us how far left the current unordered list has scrolled. And that's actually a distance I want to save in the state of this component. So let's add in a state first. That's called slider position. And set slider position, yeah. And that starts at zero. And as soon as that div scrolls, we set the scroll left. And if we now lock this slider position, we see that if we scroll, this number adds up. Now, looking at our own code, we know that one slide is 400 pixels. Plus, we have a margin right of five, which is 20 pixels. So one slide is 420 pixels in total. So that means if the unordered list scrolled 420 pixels to the left, we know that the second slide is actually the one that's currently visible. So let's store this in a variable for now. Slider width is 400 and slider margin is 20. And with that, we can add a current slider variable, which is using use memo to based on the slider position, calculate what the current slide, not slider, what the current slide is. We can calculate that by running mod.floor because we want to round down. If we're unsure, then it's rounded down of the current slider position divided by the slide width plus slide margin. Let me quickly change that to slide, also not slider. So that means that this current slide will now change as soon as you scroll. So now it becomes one, two, three, two, 
one are facts. And now we know what the current slide is, we also know what's the next or the previous slide. So let's create two functions. Go to next slide, as well as go to previous slide. And those are actually also memwise. So we add those in, use callback, because they're also gonna take in the current slide. So this way, React will create a new function for this go to next slide or previous slide as soon as the current slide value changes. So let's also already add these functions to the buttons. And of course, we should actually add it to the right one. Okay. And now we still need to scroll them. And for that, we need to have access to this unordered lists DOM element. So that means we add a slider ref like copilot again suggests and this ref we need to add on the another list and now inside those go to next slide and go to previous slide functions we need to scroll this another list so let's create a small helper function that's called scroll to slide and that takes in the slider which is the another list again and potentially null, you'll see in a second why, as well as the current slide index. And then if we don't have a slider, we return. And if we do have uh, the slider, we can run slider dot scroll to, where left is the value of the slide index times, again, like Copilot suggests, the width plus the slide margin. So this way, if slide is two, we go to 800 plus two times 20 as well is 840. And even if we would be off by our calculation by a little bit, scroll snapping would still help us to move to the correct position. We also add in behavior smooth, so it animates nicely as well. And then we can use this function to add in into our go to next and previous slide functions. Scroll to slide. Yep, like Copilot suggests again, next slide as well as the previous slide. And now you also see why I've added the null in, and that's because this ref can mainly be null when React did not render yet. So that's why I checked this in my function. So and if we now click these buttons, we already see that we are moving to the previous and next slides. The only thing that's not working yet is that we disable the button as soon as you're on the first item. But since we already have the current slide number, we can pretty easily disable this button when the current slide is zero. So now you can't click it anymore. You only don't see that it's disabled. So we also need to add in the disabled styles. So let's add in disabled text gray 400 and disabled border gray 400. Let's copy that to the other button as well. And that other button should be disabled when the current slide equals the length of the total slides. So if we now go fully to the right, you see that the left one gets enabled, and then the right one does not. And the reason is because this last slide never fully gets activated because you cannot scroll there. So depending on how you build it with the padding right I showed before, for example, it might work, but in this case, it's not. And I want to fix that by adding one more variable to also disable this button when we've reached the end of the scrollable part of this unordered list. So we can add that in by adding a variable scrolled to end of slider. That's also use memo where we take in the slider position. And in here, of course, we first need to check if we don't have a slider ref because in that case, we cannot calculate it. And then we calculate if the slider ref dot current dot scroll width minus the slider dot scroll left, which is the amount it scrolled left. So scroll width is the total distance it can scroll. Scroll width is the amount it has scrolled already. And then minus the width of itself. That's also right. So if we subtract all these, 
let's say the element is 2000 pixels wide. So that's a client width. The scroll width is 1000. So that means that we have 2000 minus 1000 because that's scrollable. And the scroll left is also 1000. Then we get to zero. So if we would, we could say equals zero and then add this variable to the disabled state of the button as well. And if we then go to the far right of the carousel, we see that the button gets disabled. And with that, we suddenly have a slider that only uses a little bit of JavaScript to make the buttons work. But apart from that, it's using full CSS to do all of its scrolling and snapping magic. And in my opinion, that's what JavaScript should be used for. It should be used to add functionality on top that's not critical to the user. So I hope this example showed you how you can pretty easily add a carousel with mainly CSS that still can be really useful to your users. Especially if you're gonna try this on mobile, the scrolling is super smooth and super native and just feels like really nice to use. In my opinion, this is definitely a way to have a carousel, again, especially on mobile. So absolutely try this out of your next project when you're actually planning on adding a carousel library just try this first and see if that already satisfies your needs because i think it will and in my opinion this should be your default to go with first instead of adding javascript library so i hope you learned a lot again links to the code are in the description again and i'll see you in the next video